Good morning, everybody, or good evening for wherever you are, or very, very late, late night uh, for the people in uh, the Americas. My name is Philip Bermans, and I'm your uh, host for the next 30 minutes, talking about labels and packaging, and then more specifically about how innovation and you how you can innovate and profit by utilizing actually digital printing. I'm going to give you uh, already uh, a spoiler. There is not one magic key to innovate and profit with digital printing. There are many options. And that is uh, one of the things that I, I really like to take you through, through the experience that Zycon has built up over the years. Zycon, as you know, is a company that has more than 30 years of history. We started actually the full color digital printing in 1993. Um, and since then, we have built up a tremendous amount of knowledge in relation to what kind of business models work and what don't work. And that is where I maybe want to start off with giving you already uh, a first heads up, uh, a guideline, a checklist, whatever you call it, that helps you actually in identifying from how digital printing can be of assistance in innovating your company and in making your company more profitable. This uh, chart that you see here is actually illustrating on the right side, sorry, on the left side, the, uh, the market, the market in which you operate, uh, different type of end use applications. It also illustrates uh, the business strategies that you could apply to it, and I will come back to that later a bit. And then the red bars or the red items are the items that you should be able to identify for yourself for you and your company, based upon the skill set that you have, based upon the objectives that you set, what are really the essentials for any kind of investment that you do in digital printing or digital production. And you see that it's not only about the printing press, there's many more components like workflow, consumables, embellishment, accelerate, Accelerate, talking about the services that, that uh, come to, to play or the skill sets that you need as a company, that really that you really need to have an, uh, uh, ask yourself from what is really necessary for me as a company or to bring my company uh, into this field of digital printing. Now, the value of digital printing, you could, you could start and say from, all right, I, create, I buy myself a solution or I invest into a solution that I can do sell these of label products. Yeah, nice. But is that really going to help you in identifying the needs that you're going to have as a company? Should actually take a look also to what are the specific end use products that you try to uh, address, the end use markets. And in the label market, you have many of them, but the majority are existing out of household chemicals, industrial chemicals, food, beverage, pharmaceutical, health and beauty, beer labels, durable labels. There's a broad range of end use applications where you could come across labels. And each of these end use applications have different requirements. That's why we have to identify it. And then on top of that, you have then the capabilities what digital is gonna be able to offer you. Being able to do more shorter runs, faster delivery, variable data. You really can go into a web to print uh, kind of uh, port, uh, business. You, you, you could offer the capability of different versions to your, uh, to, your, uh, to your end user, rather than having to print only one single design, make some variations in it. A lot of things, a lot of services that you will be enabled to offer to your customers. Now, if you look to the scheme or to the, the sketch that we then create here, it could become quite complex to find your way as a business owner or as a production manager, as a technical manager, to figure out from how can I, how should I map this out? And that is where we have over the years have seen that the majority of the successes are driven by the fact if the people that are making the investment are really, I have identified what their business model is going to be. And I take, try to make here a very simple analogy in comparison to imagine that you're going to be buying a bike. Huh? Well, if you buy a bike, there could be many reasons for that. It could be just that you buy a bike because you want to have the, the freedom to, whenever the sun is shining, uh, and certainly in these, these times, 
uh, you it could become uh, it could become even more popular that you take a, a recreative uh, tour with your bike just to to blow the day uh, out of your head, and that's what we would call a short run route. You could be actually buying a bike because you really want to train your body, really. And, and at that point in time, what you see that is that people are not only just buying a bike and then a specific racing bike, but they're also buying a smartwatch, a helmet, uh, and 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 uh, nutritional drinks to make sure that their athlete body is really taken care of. It could be that because you, that you're buying, and that's why we call actually the cost leader Clio. Now it could be that you buy a bike because because of the fact that you you're living in a city. And well, you don't want to, to, to take the car anymore for going shopping. Huh? When you go shopping to the local places, you just take a bike with a, with a basket in the front. And that helps, it allows you to, take your, to do your grocery shopping without, uh, without having to take the car or to do the walk huh? and carry the stuff. That's what we call an innovative English. And then you have a Ford business model where we talk about Transformer Teddy. And what is Transformer Teddy doing? It's not actually buying a bike. He actually is renting out bikes to people that need them at the time when they want it. These are four clusters of business models that we have seen in the, in the, the field of digital labels and packaging, and not only in digital labels and packaging, also in graphic arts, where people, their core, the core reason why they're doing that investment is driven by the, 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 re, the, the market that they really want to address. This is a slide where we are talking about uh, the, 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 the business models that we see as very successful in the market. Um, and we really divide them into four different categories. Short run Rudy, a, co a company, a business model where people are striving just to, build, to, to acquire digital capabilities, short run capabilities, eh? and nothing more, nothing less. So there's not much emphasis in integrating it with software and XYZ, purely having the asset and addressing the short run market. Cost leader Clio is where you have companies that are investing into a digital asset, but they really want to have it as a, a, a unit performing next to the other conventional uh, presses. And in that case, it means that the color and the quality needs to be looking alike so that you they can really bounce from one product to the other product without the brand owners and print buyers seeing any difference. It means also that these companies are looking into uh, 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 investing into integration of the digital assets with their MIS systems, with their ERP systems. Innovative Ingrid is a, more a business model where people are looking to for what kind of new things can I do? Full color, full color variable data having variable sequences of different SKUs in a, in a, in a, in a run, for example, uh, talking about web to print business, talking about new type of labels, talking about uh, smart labeling, for example, and I'll touch upon that a bit later as well. Or Transformer Teddy, and that's not a company that is not actually selling any labels anymore, but what these companies are doing, they are actually selling a service. They're going out and saying from, okay, Mr. Customer, you have, for example, a logistical problem, um, you're having, a, let's say, 40,000 variable data labels that you have to create, his logistical labels. You know what? Just provide me the information at the end of the day, and I will overnight print them for you and deliver them next day on your doorstep. There are some customers that are really pursuing such kind of business models. Another example is, uh, that's maybe then from the wall decoration market, where companies are going out to restaurants, bars, to, to hotels, and saying from, you know what? You just pay me a fee per month and actually I will come to come and redecorate this reception desk into the theme of the month. And so, and again, the people are not buying any wallpaper there, they're buying a service and that service comes with the redecorating of the reception desk. So those are the four different business models that we really see as successful models. And each of them, they drive certain decisions also. So we need to get that clear actually up front. Let's dive a bit deeper into costly the Clio. And cost leader Clio, well, he is going to be looking into what is now the most effective solution for my business. First of all, he looks into all the different end use markets. And the end use markets have each their specific requirements, requirements that lead to certain choices. And you can follow that by following specific lines here. Um, first of all, cost leader Clio will have to identify also from what kind of skills do I actually have inside my company? What can my employees, my, my, my employees, what, what can they handle? Uh, are there aspects that I really need to get additional training on and what I have to rely on to my partner? 
or is this something that I can train my, that my people have the skill already? He will have to look also in what kind of technology he's going to acquire. And technology you can break down into two assets or two, two, uh, two topics, being the printing technology, where the dry tone electrophotographic is really focused for the high end, high quality, allowing to do gravure offset and also flexo quality, or the lower end, the, uh, not the lower end, but the, the other uh, aspect of the market being the UV inkjet, where you're addressing the more the screen and flexo look and feel. Why are these two technologies different? Because dry tone is using uh, contact technology uh, contact printing. Hence, you have a more accurate positioning and dot formation. Uh, on the UV ink jet, you have a non-contact. So the dot formation, dot positioning is a bit less accurate. Hence, you use also specific screenings. And they translate into specific look and feels into specific quality aspects. So that's a choice where you have to, the first choice you have to make. The second choice upon your printing technology is also the aspect of consumables. So if you, for example, have a business that's really geared for wine and spirits, you really want to print very challenging materials like porous papers, eh? structured papers. In that case, a dry toner system will give you way more flexibility because it's not a liquid substance, hence it's not absorbed by the substrate. If you're talking about food labels, eh? if you want to get the highest level of food certification, again, dry toner is the best solution there. And why is that? Well, again, it's a dry substance, very large molecules, hence the migration of the, uh, the components is very limited. You can even consider, and it's not only considered, but it's defined by, by tests that are happened uh, with, with uh, respected institutes, that a paper is even a, a functional barrier for dry toner. And there's no other digital printing technology that can actually achieve such kind of result. On the UV ink set side, that's where you, you play out the benefits of durability, not having the, to apply a varnish, no need for, for lamination, a cost saving in comparison to dry toner or other toner technologies. When you really want to address the high performance, the durable label market, the, the chemical market, the, uh, the, that's where the UV inkjet really comes to play. There's also a look and feel where UV inkjet has a very strong aspect. Looking to cosmetic labels, premium beer labels, where you really need the colors to stand out, that tactile, glossy look and feel, UV inkjet is your choice there. So those are the things you have to take in consideration when you are looking into your printing technology. The next step is, are you going to do, are you going to do any embellishment? And can my conventional processes, uh, are they complementary to, or are they functioning actually onto the digital print that I've made? Maybe I need to invest also into a digital aspect, and I will come back to that later as well. Huh? So that's another aspect you really need to identify. Is my current capabilities matching, yes or no? Uh, do I need to make modifications and uh, what have you? And then on the converting side, also there you need to make choices. Again, can I use my existing converting lines? Are you striving, for example, for a very fast turnaround? Well, in that, kind of, in that case, you might want to consider to go for a laser die cutting unit rather than a conventional die cutting unit. And again, there's a lot of options that are there. And you can actually even uh, put such kind of solutions in line with any kind of digital printing system. Now, these are all the topics that, that most of the time are very easy to comprehend, but then there's that additional layer. And that is today one of the most important ones where we're talking about workflow, where we talk about automating your environment. And that is where I have another example here at the new innovation that just is going to, I'm just going to spark your, uh, your imagination, where recently Zycon has announced, announced a new product being the Zycon Color Services 2.0, which allows you to fully automate the profiling and the quality check of your digital press. What does this mean? If you look, for example, to traditional profiling, color profiling of your machines, it takes about 40 minutes to do a fingerprint of your conventional or your digital press by printing the, uh, the test strips and then by measuring it out. Uh, then you have to do a quality verification. That's an additional 16 minutes during which the machines are not operational because you're doing this, this, uh, uh, this basic work to profile your machines. Here with the new Zycon Color Services 2.0, it is fully automated. There's an inline spectrometer sitting inside our dry toner presses who is measuring the color profile, sending it into the cloud. 
the cloud is automatically then generating the, the quality profile. Immediately, the press does a verification. Uh, and at the end, it will indicate from, yes, continue operator, you're, you're doing a great job. Uh, or no, the profile is not right. So we might redo the process, or maybe the operator has to take an action, or maybe the production manager has to be informed. This is a new innovation that is going to save a gigantic amount of time. What has come out of the tests, what we did with our bad back customers, it was remarkable on what kind of costs they were saving. And that is, for example, things where a company who is striving to be a cost leader, Clio, would certainly invest in. This is an aspect which they would think is very valuable because it reduces the downtimes, it increases the OEE of their operation. So, so far, cost either Clio. Let's have a look at innovative Ingrid. So what kind of innovations are there possible through digital printing or through a digital transformation? You could actually do that, for example, by innovating through new products that you create. An example of that is, is recent announced pouch application, which is actually a laminated flexible packaging construction that can be converted into a pouch solution. You see the image at the bottom here, it's all related to flex flow process where you're actually digitally printing on a, uh, a polyester layer, on a polyester uh, layer that is coated with an EVA coating. Afterwards, you apply actually a water-based uh, glue uh, and, and at the same time in line, you're automatically also laminating your solution together. So it's a very compact solution. It can be inline, can be offline but it is 100% solvent-free, both printing and laminating. So it's a very eco-friendly uh, solution. It gives you a zero after cure time. Why? Because the, so the laminating that is happening here is actually through a thermal lamination. So there where with conventional laminate, lamination technologies like solventless or water-based lamination, you're actually requiring as an after cure of a few days or even weeks. Here, the, laminate, the laminated construction can immediately go to the packaging and converting line. It's 100% food safe, again, because of the choice made for, for dry toner here. It gives you a broad variety of constructions. Why? Because you're always printing on the same material and the complexity of the construction is what you laminate here at the back. And of course, with such kind of solution, you're really geared for the short and medium run lengths. And that is something what an innovative ingrid would really be interested in. Aspect, other aspects where innovative Ingrid would look at is, for example, the digitalization of their embellishment units or the embellishment processes. Processes that are not, and, and in that case, they're not doing that in conjunction with digital printing. It could very well be that they make this investment alongside conventional printing and taking actually flex, flexo printed work onto the embellishment unit and only digitalizing the embellishment. Or we have even customers that are taking just straight label material, most of the time somewhat color then, and then apply actually the digital embellishment features to it. Now, what kind of digital embellishment features do are we offering today and do we have in our portfolio is, for example, haptic printing, which is enabled through our Zycon Panther series. And those are actually our UV inkjet portfolio. And you see the haptic effect here. So it's a kind of a texture image that we're able to print onto the, uh, onto the, uh, onto the designs. Or you could really go for a full standalone uh, digital embellishment unit that can do 2D, 3D, and haptic varnish. Uh, 2D, very thin, 3D, again, that uh, very thick layer, or haptic, meaning that you're printing actually a specific image with your varnish. Or you could do 2D, 3D, and haptic foiling, or even braille. So those are also aspects where an innovative Ingrid would look at to, uh, to reach out to her customers and sharing what kind of new things she can do. And on the back of it, of course, she gets also the volume, the basic volumes, but she promotes herself as really being the innovative company. Now that is all product related, but there's also another aspect. There's an aspect of where customers are, are or brand owners are looking for solutions, how to connect with the end users. They really want to understand what the consumers are thinking about their product. And that's where smart labeling is also a new thing that is possible. And where does it all come from? Well, if you look to the consumer or the buying behavior of a consumer, 
you have indeed that moment of truth. The first one being there in the shop where you look at the product and you actually make your choice. The second one is where you experience the product at home and you, you connect with the brand. Now, through the past years, you see also that with social media, there's a, a lot of other things in that buying journey. Talking about stimulating people and also by people researching what kind of products they want to do. They really want to buy the fair trade coffee because they, re, they, they want to contribute to society and to the global society. So those type of, that world is all existing. And I think we, we all are aware of this. Huh? But now the big question is for the big brands, how do I know what is happening? And you could see that actually through social, the social activity, let it be on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, or Instagram, YouTube, where people are sharing their experiences. Now, as a brand owner, you could start searching for that and trying to gather the data. But the real thing is where you start to make smart labels and you integrate a, a, a QR code or another code inside your solution, then brand owners can get insights into what their customers are doing. We had actually late earlier this year, we had a specific session around smart labeling and I'm more than happy to, to give you more information upon it. You will find it also on our virtual booth, the information about smart labeling. So I, what, I've, what I've tried to bring to, what I try to focus on here is I bring it to the essence because what is actually a brand owner then gonna get? And that's the value that Innovative Ingrid has to sell to the print buyers and the, and the brand owners is the aspect that you can get insight, where are my consumers sitting? This is actually an example of a, a water brand in Finland with which we've done actually a customer case study with, uh, together with our customer Nordic label. And this is the water brand that sees on how the consumers are behaving and, and working with it. They can actually track through which retailer they have sold their water. They can see on what kind of promotions they have. And that, that's all information that sits inside that unique code that they uh, put onto the, onto the labeling. And where, of course, they've put a trigger into it that people are scanning it. And by scanning it, people identify themselves where they are, what they're doing, what product they bought, bought, at what time they're consuming it. And that is the insight that today for brand owners is really, really valuable. Because at that point in time, you can start to connect with your consumers as well. Even though with the, uh, with the hiccup that we had earlier on, um, I, did, uh, I did try to manage to stay within time. I think we had a uh, 30 minutes time and I hope I was able to give you a, a good insight and, and a, 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 a bit of a taste on where they really the profiting and innovation with digital printing could lie. I don't know if there are, is still time for any questions. If that would not be the case, you have my contact details here. You can find me also at the virtual Drupa booth and feel free to ask me any other questions. Let me have a look. I see that there is something in the... Yeah, there's a, a question in regarding to, I think, the automated profiling. So what about the cost involved in terms of wastage if profiling is wrong and a customer is printing and a customer is printing um, this for eight to 10 minutes uh waiting for the result a good uh, it's a good remark a good question so indeed so if i understand it correctly you did the profiling well you're not at the time when you're doing the profiling although it takes eight minutes um you would not be printing on that press either so at that point in time you the press would be idle but of course that is less than what you had with other with the an analog system where you actually have 40 minutes downtime so you bring the 40 minutes down to eight minutes. So you'd still have some downtime there. But as soon as you start printing again, uh, or as soon as you get an okay of the machine, what you do is you actually have a specific color profile strip, a very small color profile strip that you print alongside the job and you are continuously verifying if the press remains within inside the color standard. If not the case, you the automatically she makes a new profile. And you can actually define in which boundaries it has to be. Of course, the, the, the trigger to do reprofiling is something which you would put narrower than your actual uh, standard specifications. So that you always stay, even when you're reprofiling, you're actually getting a, a better result. 
We've tried it. I mean, we. I'm, I'm, I'm personally not the color expert. Eh? I know something about it, but I can really uh, 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 bring you in contact with actually our color experts. We've done this automated color profiling with companies that uh, that have invested in Zycon and are really big brand owners. And I think all of those people that were involved in that project, they were really amazed about the level of automation and consistency that solution brought. So that is really a true breakthrough innovation in the digital printing environment, today only available on our dry toner system. You could, have, you could expect that that over time becomes also available in others, but it's really something that I would encourage you to look at, to have a closer look at. Uh, thanks for the information, informative uh, presentation. Can we use a WebFed press for proofing a job? like in the case of a sheet fed press or will it be very expensive yeah the consequence indeed of uh, running web fed presses is that indeed when you would do profiling then you would have more waste now the reason why you would be using a web fed press in your environment uh, is because the end product is maybe a roll and therefore the costs that would come that are associated in for example profiling are indeed and costs that you have to translate into the solution now, one of the things that I did not mention, I've talked there about Zycon Color Services, is that same service that could also be used for profiling all the other, uh, all the other machines. Uh, not in an automated way, in a manual way, but that Zycon Color Services would replace any kind of color management software that you have today and simplify the whole process by working through the cloud and by not having no need to have all that master competence on color management because the cloud will actually do this for, for you for, to a great extent. Yeah. At the same time, that color management software in the cloud would also give you quality reports per machine, flex or leather press, whatever kind of digital press. Yeah, it can actually store, do all that information for you. The minimum thickness is asked here from, uh, the, from the machines. Uh, so if you look to, we have, uh, I, I spoke about the dry toner portfolio, which is our cheetah portfolio. On the cheetah portfolio, you can go from 40 GSM, which is very thin. We even have customers printing 18, 18 GSM for cheese labels and tea bags and that type of stuff. So that's the minimum thickness. The maximum thickness is 350 GSM or 550 micron. If you look to the Panther portfolio, which is our UV inkjet portfolio, there we go from around about 60 GSM up to 250 GSM. That's the, the range you have to look into. And again, that is also could also be a very clear uh, uh, parameter to drive your decisions in what is a solution that fits best for your uh, business objectives. So I don't see any further questions from, uh, from anybody coming in here. Uh, so with that, what I would say is uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. I do apologize for the small technical hiccup that we had, huh? even, uh, even these days after more than a year of practicing all our Zoom sessions and those type of stuff, we see that technology can still fail on us, but I hope we were quick in recovering and that you still were able to capture the full story of what we uh, were sharing. I do like to invite you to, uh, to attend also the session of my colleague Dimitri van Gaab, who will dive more specific into the graphic art solutions that Zycon is providing. Uh, and that will be later this week. Do have a checkup on our Zycon booth in the virtual Drupa to figure out the specific times. It certainly would be worth attending that session as well. Oh, there's one more question that I see. No, yeah, one second. Oh, let me see if I can address it. Great session. Well, thank you for the compliments. Uh, uh, the recordings and the slides can be made available indeed. Uh, you have my contact details. So what I would suggest is that reach out to me um, if we're not reaching out, if, if Drupal themselves would not reach out to you, uh, but feel free to reach out to me and I'm more than happy to provide this information to you. All right. I'm uh, happy that you enjoyed it, even though with the small technical hiccups. So with this, we I like to wrap it up. Thank you all for joining and looking forward to meet you at the Zycon booth.